Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the flight deck. <coughs> Sorry about that. I got a little bit uh, froggy there at the last second. Uh, we're here in a rainy Topeka, Kansas. Uh, today we're continuing our tour of the U.S. capitals. We're going to head north, flying up to Lincoln, Nebraska, our second Lincoln of the tour. As you can see, it's a rainy day here. We're looking at some uh, clouds along the way and probably rain when we come into our destination airport. So. We're going to be doing an ILS approach and landing up in uh, Lincoln, so that'll be interesting here in the DC-3. So let's hop on board, start getting the aircraft ready to go. All right, we'll come in and we'll take our seat. Things seem to be a little bit better today. Not sure what the uh, issue was yesterday with the stuttering and everything. I loaded in after the flight and it seemed to work well, so we will see what happens. Anyway, let's get over here. We'll get the battery cart hooked up start getting power up to the systems we're going to also turn on the cockpit lights and we'll just let it warm up for a second and there we go got myself a drink of water while i was doing that so we'll come through, make sure everything is set to go. Uh, we can turn on the passing lights. We'll turn on the, uh, sorry, passing lights off. Position lights are on. Uh, we'll get the uh, windshield heat going as well. It is kind of cold out. And we can come down and around and get everything else ready to go. So we're gonna go to our left main tanks and our right main tanks. We'll get them turned on. There we are, cowl flaps will go to the open position for engine start. Make sure everything is set and good. Throttles, props, and mix relievers are set. Fuel is... Looking good right where we want it. We have enough fuel for the flight. So let's get the engines up and running. And we can let them warm up. They're definitely going to need it. So we're going to start number two, the right engine first. Mixture. Uh, oh, that's right. I had to restart. Had a crash as I was loading in the first time. So i got to come in and reset this, which it didn't do it. And that is good. And now I can do this. Let's me operate these independently of the controls on the yoke. All right, so that is the uh, switches are on. We're going to bring the fuel up to auto rich. The propeller is going to go fully forward. Throttle's cracked about half an inch. Fuel's already on the main tank. I'm turning the generator on. Boost pump will come on. And we can energize the right side. You can hear it winding up. Go to a steady hum, and we will mesh and prime. right engine up and running. It's going to take a second to uh, fully get up to speed and go up. These round engines, the cylinders uh, can not all fire at the same time. On a nine cylinder you might get six or seven going and then as it starts to warm up for the first few seconds the other ones will kick in and uh, start going as well. You can actually hear the sound change as that happens. It's an interesting process. All right we're going to come down. We're going to go mixture auto rich. Again propeller fully forward. Crack the throttle to about the same point. Ignition on both. Generators on. Boost pumps on. Energizing on the left. Wait for that steady uh, sound off of the flywheel, which is what we're spinning up. And that flywheel, when we engage it, is going to be what spins the engine around for a start. And there we go, hit the prime. Let that go. Oh. No, it didn't 
so you don't want to start. So we'll do it again. We'll energize the left engine. While we're doing that, we'll get those doors closed in the back. Oh, I went right. That's why that didn't work. There we go. Wait to hear it fire off. Holding that primer. There we go. That's both engines up and running now. They're looking good. So we can come down here now and uh, get everything else on and going. We'll turn the avionics on. We're going to switch over to our internal batteries. We'll go to our battery cart off. Generators are both online, which is what we want. Again, we got the lights on, so we are all looking good inside. We're going to make sure the engines are sitting at about a thousand RPM. It's about 1100 there. Just to bring all the temperatures up and get everything up and going as our outside air temperature... Oh, we're fairly warm and it is raining. Uh, the weather forecast here at Topeka is currently showing... Uh, winds are 140 at 6, 9 miles of visibility. We got rain. Scattered clouds at 1,200, broken at 4,300, overcast at 10,000. 19, no, sorry, it's 19 degrees. And QNH is 2,996. So we can adjust our barrel slightly. There we go. 2,996 is set. And we are good there. All right, and we are going to be flying through a couple of waypoints. First of all, I'm going to turn the radials. There's 122.8 on the primary and 121.5 on COM2. Of course, we'll be broadcasting on one and monitoring two. That's fine. We're up and going there. A couple of VOR is going to be in use today as we head out. The first one is going to be the Topeka VOR on 1178. Get that dialed in, 1178, put that on the primary. And uh, the next one is going to be the BIE VOR on 110.6. So we'll get that in the secondary, 110.6. The next one after that is going to be the Lincoln VOR on 116.5. Over here, it's 1178 and 110, 1106 is correct. First uh, heading we're going to head out to the VOR is going to be 22 degrees. So we'll just come down here and set this to 22 as a reference point. We're all good. Everything is warming up. We're going to come over, shift the hydraulics over so we have the gyro pilot working. There we, there we go. And we'll crank up the indicator here just so she is ready to go. All right, so the aircraft is warmed up enough. We are looking pretty good. Everything has been removed out front. Chocks and pylons and all that good stuff. So we're gonna come out, we're gonna taxi out on the apron here. Let's just quickly go over our flight plan for today's flight as she finishes warming up. So here's the chart of the airport. We're gonna come out and we're gonna come around, we're gonna taxi on Alpha all the way up along the edge of the ramp up to uh, runway 13 here. We'll then uh, be taking off in a southeasterly direction. From there, we're going to make our turn up towards the Topeka VOR on the uh, northeast side of the city of Topeka, Kansas. We're then going to be turning northwest, flying up over this way, passing into Nebraska eventually. Not sure exactly where that happens, but we're going to go up to Beatrice here, the Beatrice VOR, flying north. We're going to fly up over Lincoln, Nebraska to the Lincoln VOR. We're then going to carry on to the north, at which point we're going to do a teardrop around and we we'll, should pick up the ILS to 
come in. We'll be flying the ILS in manually, as there is no uh, autopilot able to do it for us, but we should be able to get in and land. Current weather down in Lincoln is a bit overcast. It's got a low overcast. We'll see what it's like when we get there. Uh, minimums for the airport are 200 feet. So it says it's a 300 foot overcast. That's going to make it interesting. All right, so back to the airport. We are ready to taxi out. All right. So we're going to swing around. And again, we're going to be heading uh, all the way back here and up to the end of the runway. All right, so brakes are set. Let's head out. Uh, we'll turn on our uh, landing lights since we are uh, on the ground here. Should have the beacon on. Uh, everything else is looking good. We'll get the pitot heat on now since it is uh, kind of raining out. Let's get some power. The thing with the landing lights is we only need them when the wheels are down as uh, they are attached to the gear. There we go. Kick that tail around. Looks like we're going to be in rain showers on and off. The rains, I've been watching the rain here, it's been kind of uh, coming and going. make this left turn here, follow it up. There's the end of the runway that we're going to be using. Getting some uh, weird uh, ghosting off of the wings there. I'm going to have to check and see if there's been another graphics card update, or graphics card, graphics driver update. Good. So we're going to set a heading here of uh, 22 degrees, and then we'll adjust from there once we get in the air. That's our directional gyro heading selector. So we're coming up to the entry point. As mentioned, this is the second uh, Lincoln we're coming up to. There are uh, multiple in the U.S. And this is our second actually U.S. state capital that's called Lincoln, which is uh, kind of interesting. going to need to go over to the uh, offset point there. We'll just come up to the main one. Here on runway 13. All right, we'll just do a quick uh, Quick 
weather check. I'm not. Really seeing anything, unfortunately, in Navigraph. Must not be picking up the information. But we are ready to move out. Hello, Robert. How are you doing? Yeah, there's been yeah, there's Lincoln. Um, is it the county seat as well? And the county name. It's funny when I'm doing this, I'm going through some of the names and the, the number of Springfields in the US is uh, pretty high. It's like 18 or something like that. But this is actually the second state capital we've been to that's named Lincoln. All right, so we're lined up now, pretty much. We're gonna be good to go. So we'll get on the brakes. We're gonna bring the engines up to 20 inches, let them stabilize. Props are fully forward, mixtures on our rich. Engines are stable. Lincolnshire, yeah. Uh, we're gonna set flaps, notch one. Lights are on. We are good to go. So, brakes released. Power to 40 inches. A little forward pressure, get the tail up. And heavy on the rudder get control easing that pressure make sure she's not digging in too much there's 80 knots Look the bright pressure and up we go we got positive rate gear up and we're going to climb out to about a thousand feet and then we'll begin our turn Climb up, we're going to bring the propellers back to 2500 RPM. Power back to 35 inches. And reset the props. 2500 RPM. And we'll start to trim for our climb. There's 500 feet. We'll bring up the flaps. knots we want about that 110 the yellow mark on the speedo That's some beautiful light coming uh, coming through over here Looking good so gear is up everything is good we're picking up the uh, the VOR here so we're gonna make our turn now Lovely, uh, lovely fall trees provided by Rex Weather Advanced. There's that climb speed of about 110. And we'll turn to the VOR. Keep it nice and gentle, keep that climb going. We are going up to about 10,000 feet today. There's the airport. We're in the rain here, definitely. And there we go. So we'll level off. And we'll keep climbing. Well, well, wings level, but we're going to keep climbing. So we'll come over here. We will see what happens when we turn on the gyro pilot. See how bad it is. Let's uh, just do a reset here for our heading. Make sure it's not too egregious. There we go. No, 
those up. Got a little bit more nose up there, get the uh, climb rate going up. Get our speed back down to that 110 for the climb. Speed starting to come back, coming up for 3,000 feet, and into the clouds we go. So we're going to adjust our heading now, uh, make sure that uh, we are in there. There's our turn. So we're now on both uh, elevator and aileron control through the gyro pilot. adjust for it's a short distance out to the VOR so we're going to adjust to head directly towards it and uh, we're not worried too much about the numbers around the, the disc we're going more by the direction of the arrow Doing 120, we can uh, add in a little bit more climb, and our power is coming back, so we're going to increase the throttles, keep her at 35 inches, so we can come up top. We'll turn off the landing lights, position lights are on, heat's on, the pedo heat's on. That's all good. We're all good there. Good here. Boost pumps can now come off. We are looking good. Next heading off of the VOR is going to be a heading of 305 degrees. So we're going to set this one roughly to 305. And it'll just give us a ballpark of the direction we're going to be heading. And this one doesn't need to turn as the needle shows us our direction of flight according to the uh, heading and uh, that's we can use as an indicator well this one you have to tune in the dial is just showing us any directly towards so speeds coming down a little bit so we're going to uh, ease off on our rate of climb get that speed coming back up again we'll rate down about 600 feet per minute Coming up for 5,000 feet, power is dropping as the air density comes down, so we'll add a little bit more power. And yeah, still nothing to really see out there, a lot of, uh, a lot of cloud. A couple more notches downwards. So as I was saying, I loaded back into the sim yesterday after uh, the flight and uh, had no lag or hesitation in Edmonton once I was in. So I, I have no idea what was causing that issue, but uh, it was uh, was a little annoying. So we're 118 miles to go. That's direct line between Topeka and Lincoln. We're not quite going in direct line because of the VORs we're following. There's the swing coming in. So we're going to now turn to that 305. Uh, I'm not sure what I just did there, but it seems to have locked it. Into cage. I don't want to cage it. How do I uncage it? I gotta. Uh oh. How do I pull this out now? I 
Anybody know? Great. She's not, oh, there we go. Uh, 305. Here's our turn. Airspeed is good. We're coming up for 7,000 feet. Uh, power, our uh, manifold pressure is dropping, so we're going to forward on the throttles. We are looking good. Now, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set this up for the ILS approach. So the runway heading we're going to want when we come in is 177. So I'm just going to swing down here. So we're going to turn this around to 177. And that's going to set the radial that we're going to use for the ILS. This is kind of mandatory. So we're just going to go a notch or two past south. There's what would be uh, 180, that would be 175, so we're going to go about there. So that will give us our heading here on the um, ILS. Which we'll need when we come in, and I've got that set up now so I don't have to worry about it. We'll go up to uh, 35 inches again. Everything is good. Keep that power up as we climb up. We're coming up for 9,000 feet, still on uh, 2,500 RPM. And uh, I did say there was an overcast layer at 10,000, so we're probably going to be in the cloud for the entire flight. Speed's looking good. We can come down probably another notch. Keep that airspeed up about 110. Ah, the wipers do work. Very cool. Of course, they are uh, on angled windows, which is why they look a little bit funny. You do have to manually stop them. All right, we're coming up for 10,000 feet, so we can start uh, really cranking the uh, angle down. When we hit 140, we'll start to set her up for our cruise. So we're just going to uh, keep playing with the trim watching that we're level, watch the speed come up. We should get up to about 165 or so. Oh, a little break in the clouds there. Keep it her level, keep that extra power in for climb until the speed gets to 140. It'll help, we're helping it accelerate. So the propellers are going to come back to 20 inches. Manifold pressure down to 30 inches. Our propellers back to sorry, 2,000 RPM, and we're going to uh, trail the cowl flaps. And we're now configured for cruise. We'll bring the mixture to auto lean. Keep slowly accelerating. Looks like we're coming through some of the clouds here. Getting some slight views there. But 
uh, definitely a rainy that's what we've come out of definitely got some uh, midwestern storm action going on today this is the longest lake we'll be flying as we head up towards the uh, Beatrice VOR. When the thin arrow flicks over, that means we're now within range. And it's showing. So we're just going to cruise along here. We'll keep an eye on our altitude, make sure we're more or less level. Speed is slightly down. I'm not sure if we've got a headwind here. Just keep us nice and level at 10,000 feet. Do our T's and P's, so temperatures and pressures are all looking good. Outside air temperatures still about 9 degrees, so we're not worried about icing too much. Well, it could be a thing. Let's, uh, let's do a check. We'll come over here. We're going to add the hot air R in. So there's the hot air set, and we'll turn it on. See if we get a difference in the carb and the airspeed. She's locked in. I'm not seeing any difference here, and everything else is holding. So it doesn't seem to be. Oh, it is modeled. Oh, look at that. It is making a difference. But it didn't affect our airspeed at all. So you can see the carb temperatures are down in the uh, warning area for zero degrees. And if I add, add heat here, it brings it up into the green. So we bring those into there. Just at the edge of the green. If we were having icing that was uh, robbing power from the engines, we'd see a speed increase now. but uh, not really seeing anything. But we're doing 163 knot ground speed, so we're getting, it looks like a little bit of a push. layers we're flying through. Looks like a bit of a hole here. Definitely cloudy day over the Midwest here. Interesting that the uh, weather radar in, or the weather is not coming up in Navigraph. Oh, there it goes. Just popped in. So yeah, we got rain for a bit, just before the beach was be aware that the rain system should clear. And then uh, we might have little isolated showers as we come in, but I think the clouds are still going to be there. Let's see, yeah, there's a cloud cover. Yeah, we're in a little bit of a clear spot at the moment. Cloud cover is going to come back in for the rest of the flight shortly. But we might be between uh, between layers at the moment. Uh, there's trace, trace amounts of icing around. We're gonna be getting into an area which is a little bit more uh, prone to icing, so we'll keep an eye on our uh, carb heat. And uh, looks like we might have a little bit of mild turbulence in the area, or very light turbulence anyway.
But for now, it looks like we're just going to be passing between layers here. This is the Allegheny Airlines, flew out in the uh, New England area, in New York, for a long, large number of years. It's nice seeing this old beast flying. Some really cool lighting effects here. A little bit of jumping as we scroll around. There's that cloud build up, more storms over that way. I think we'll shoot the ILS going in. That shouldn't be too difficult. At least with all the aids I've got for this. So as we're cruising along, we'll just uh, remind everybody that uh, we are streaming six days a week. Wednesdays and Sundays are multiplayer, such as this one. Well, speaking of which, let's get it on, see who's out there got anyone around. Just turned on the, uh, the tags. Oh, there's Cessna 152 back over that way. Some pretty big uh, cell build up there. That's pretty cool. Uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays are on VATSIM. We'll be streaming again on Friday back in the Boeing 737 as we fly from Boise, Idaho back to our base in Denver. No stream on Saturday, I'm actually tied up with something, and then on Sunday we're back in the 747F flying support to the F1 series. Currently in Doha in Qatar, and uh, we'll see where we're heading on Sunday from there. It's gonna be a long flight though. If you wish to join in or fly some of the routes that we're flying, uh, all my live streams are multiplayer. You're welcome to our community fights. You're welcome to join in. You can come to the Discord. Uh, links are in the description. I'll put it into the chat as well. You can join in, find out what we're flying and when. Come along and uh, fly to some of the places around the world that we're flying. Uh, again, small aircraft all the way up to the big airliners and uh, all around the world at the moment we're flying you're more than welcome to join us and if you really uh, want to help and uh, support the channel and what we do and uh, places we fly and the aircraft we we fly in you can uh, join the channel and uh, lend us a hand that way but if you have any questions about the aircraft about simming in general aviation feel free to ask either here or over on the discord you are more than welcome to. So the aircraft is really stable at the moment. It's maintaining altitude nicely, which means there's not a lot of turbulence and there's not a lot of air pressure changes. It seems to be one big giant system we're flying through right now very nice. So once we hit uh, Beatrice, we're going to head north, and uh, that's going to take us heading up towards Lincoln. Ground speeds up to 165, which is very nice. So about uh, 30 miles out, we'll begin our descent. And we got to get down to about 3,100 feet for the localizer in intercept. So we'll be targeting 3,000 roughly as we come in for the ILS. And we'll 
be on a three degree uh, three degree the um, glide slope we want to be doing about uh, 475 feet per minute descent rate according to the chart so of course we're not flying to the biggest city in the state we're flying to the capital Omaha I believe is the biggest city in Nebraska but we're going to be heading to uh, Lincoln the capital city and we're finding with a bunch of these states that the, uh, the capitals are definitely small towns and uh, a lot uh, a lot smaller than some of the bigger cities some interesting cloud formations as we fly through a little bit of light on the clouds there, pink light starting, I wonder if the sun's starting to go down. That's well, still fairly high. That cloud cover is starting to pick up. This is that hole we were flying over, as I mentioned, so we're heading out back out over that cloud deck. So we're slightly below 10,000 feet, so we'll do a notch of up, get us going back up uh, level, back up above 10,000. So we got to lose about uh, 7,000 feet. Airport elevation is 1,219. Touchdown zone 1195, so 1,200 foot touchdown zone. Should make it interesting. All right, we've lost uh, both uh, VOR, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch over now. So we'll get ready. So we're going to be going to the BIE VOR. It's a, I think it's a low power, which is why we're not picking it up yet. That uh, is the 110.6, so we'll put that in. And we'll dial in the next one here, which is 1161. That is now in, and we'll put uh, 1161 over on this side. There we go. Actually, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to leave 1161 there, since that's the Lincoln VR, which is the last one we're going to use. And uh, I'm going to put in here the ILS frequency, which is, let me just pull up the chart, 111.1. There we go, 111.1. That way, we're going to just flip over on this one. I can use this one for the Lincoln VR on, on VOR, or now two. And then this one I can switch over to the ILS frequency when we get closer. Oh, and there's the Lincoln uh, VOR coming in now. Or the, uh, uh, no, that will be the Lincoln VOR. That's what we're set to. Yeah, 1161, it's a high power one, so we're picking that one up already. Uh, 1.160, 1.1. 0 0.6, yeah, it's still set. Should come in maybe 30 miles out. We just look at the data. Yeah, it's a terminal run. It's uh, low power for the. It's a local VOR they use in the vicinity. But we're heading on the right heading. It's going to make a slight adjustment to the north. Also going to come down here with the little indicator arrow. Course is going to be 177 as mentioned so we will use this as setting it up for the uh, direction on the runway. And I can use that as we uh, come around due to teardrop.
So there's 180, that's 117 there. We are looking good. So no signs of icing. Everything is operating well. So we got up there. We come over to Fred's side or Roger's side. Sorry. Everything's looking good on the right engine. There's where the uh, entry into the cockpit is. And then there's the aircraft. Workhorse of the fleet. Is that, is that eight? Yeah, it was eight. Built in the mid 1930s, it was a commercial airliner uh, in the late 30s and then saw military service both in the U.S. Army Air Corps and the U.S. Navy, along with the Royal Canadian Air Force, the Royal Air Force, and uh, several other countries used it. It was used all around the world. Probably most famous from the D-Day uh, invasions, but this thing transported stuff across the Atlantic, uh, North Africa, through Italy during the uh, missions there, of course. Navy used it down in the Pacific, going between all the islands where it was uh, designated the RD-4, and uh, the Brits, Canadians, used them in uh, Burma, so taking supplies in in the fight against the, uh, the Japanese there, so got a lot of use around the world, and still in use today. There's a number of airlines around that fly this thing. One of the more famous being uh, Buffalo Airways up in uh, Yellowknife, where we were in on a previous series. Uh, we were just up there a couple uh, legs ago. All right, so we're getting closer. Again, look, everything is looking good. Field supply is looking perfectly fine, both tanks, everything's good, car heat, we're all good there. We've got a weather update in Lincoln, I wanted to do the last one, 1754, here's 1954, winds are 110 at 8. Winds are supposed to be coming around to the south, uh, 3 miles of visibility, mist, Overcast at 500 feet, 16 degrees, QNH is 2992. So we're going to stick with the runway 18. That'll give us a little bit of a crosswind, but uh, the other runways are all RNAVs, and if we got cloud deck down to 500 feet, uh, we're going to need the ILS for the landing. So we'll be doing it that way. Uh, it does say the winds are supposed to move to the south. For, well, not for a while. But the light rain is supposed to continue with misty and showers and the low clouds. So not much we can do about that. Pretty cool flying between the layers. So how many people are looking forward to FS 2024? going to be interesting. Let's 
see what happens there. Still en route to the Beatrice VOR. Range is slowly coming in because we're traveling on an angle. See, we're now picking up that VOR. We're pretty much heading directly towards it.
Uh, I do hate it when they say, can I put you on a quick hold and then five minutes go by and they're not back. Sorry about that. We're coming up, uh, we're getting close to the uh, BIE uh, VOR. Still heading directly towards it. We can see the Lincoln one. That's going to slowly start to move down, pointing off to our right. See that movement should just be starting to happen. And it is indicating the localizer already. And that is correct, we are to the right of the localizer, even though it's reverse sensing right now. Because we are in the wrong side of the airport, flying in the wrong direction. If I go I'm not sure what that was. So I get an overhead? Yes I do. So this is on auto. So if I turn the markers on. I don't know if you can hear that. It's very, very faint. Yeah, why don't we change the volume, but I can just barely make out the nav. I've turned on the markers. We'll see if we hear the markers as we fly overhead as we come in on the ILS. All right, we're now going to turn to a heading of basically north. And we'll uh, start our turn out towards the Lincoln VOR. Since we have the line there, you can see the, the needle swing. We just, we're just we over top of the Beatrice VOR, which is why she's gone uh, dead. And there she is flipping around and uh, lining up there. So we're going to come up and we're going to uh, tune in now the ILS of 111.0, which is currently not registering. Sorry, that was the Beatrice VOR, not the ILS that was coming in there. But we're going to head towards the Lincoln VOR now. So we'll make a, a couple of adjustments here. Get us heading out in that direction. A little bit more exact. And uh, when we're about 15 miles or so away from Lincoln, we are going to begin our descent down. I've got the uh, spot picked. We're going to start heading down roughly at uh, well the entry into the airspace, the controlled airspace around Lincoln. Which is in about hmm, 15 miles. And we'll begin our descent down to 3,000 feet. Again we're going to come down. We'll get in below, uh, below the glide slope and then we'll make the turn in and uh, pick up the localizer there. Again, we are going to be uh, hand flying this as there is no uh, autopilot in here that can fly a ILS approach. So this is going to be our tool that we're going to be using. Our glide slope and localizer needles, we'll use them. We should pop out a couple hundred feet above minimums. Uh, it says the uh, the weather is overcast of 500. 
and minimums are 200 so we'll see how that works out And 111.1 is the frequency, 177 is the heading, so that's all entered in. Uh, the Lincoln VOR is past the airport, so that is fine. Once we hit there, we'll probably swing out another 10 degrees or so to the uh, right, and then uh, use that as the teardrop to come in and loop around and pick up the ILS coming back in. We'll be passing the town of Lincoln. It will be over here, just uh, we're kind of coming up the left side of it or the western side of the town. Looks like we got a uh, E320 at Lincoln. Very interesting. No, oh, she's uh, picking up the ILS now. She's the needle swung in and pointing at it. We'll start our descent at that point and then we'll hold at 5,000 until we're a little bit more comfortable to drop that final 2,000. But it's not too bad, that light turbulence that was in the forecast we haven't really seen, although we may hit it when we go through the clouds, so there is always that. Alright, so the thick needle is the ILS, the thin needle is the Lincoln VOR. Lights are on in the cockpit, so we're going to be good for when we head into the clouds. Alright, so we've got about two miles to go and then we're going to start down. We'll pull the power slightly down to about uh, 20 inches of power and then we will trim for about a 500 foot per minute descent. That should work fairly well. So we're starting to uh, drift slightly, so let's bring us a little bit more to the north. We're doing 181 now, so we definitely got that wind coming up on us out of the south. That's looking good. So there we are, we're over the point. So we're going to uh, get that nose down to about a 500 foot per minute. And we'll pull the power back. We'll bring it down to 25 inches at the moment. We'll see if our speed starts to increase out of control. So again, we're going to, uh, when we hit the Lincoln VOR, we will turn off at about a 15 to 20 degree right turn, create a little bit of separation so we can swing around and turn in. And we've kind of 
of left that higher stuff behind us. Oh, there's the sun. Coming in nicely. It's a nice slow descent. And we'll watch the power. She's going to creep up as we get into the thicker air, so we'll just keep pulling her back. Props are staying at 2,000 RPM at the moment. And make sure we'll stay in lean until we get uh, on final. We're going to increase that descent rate. This is uh, we're a little bit slow, so we're going to bring it down to about 800 feet. And I'll bring that power back to 20 inches. One of the markers. But we're on we're coming in the other way, so it's not quite the right one. And we've just lost the Beatrix VOR. Or we lost the ILS, sorry. That'll kick in uh, when we come around the other side. We're still heading towards the Lincoln VOR. Eight thousand feet. So once we're down, we're going to be landing, and it's going to be a departure to the right. Departure to the left, sorry. So we're going to head to the terminal. Uh, yeah. Right down to a thousand feet per minute. Just about to fly overhead the airfield, it's kind of right below us now. Just watching for the needle to swing, and then we'll head off. 15 degree heading the other way. Seven thousand feet, there's the needle swing. On the ILS, it's come back in. See that starting to come around, so let's head to a heading of about 15 degrees. And I will follow this out, build some separation for our turn for the intercept. And as you can see, the glide slope is well below us. We'll keep ascending down. There 
goes the uh, Lincoln VOR. We're flying over that now. Six thousand feet. And there's that cloud layer coming up. The only thing about the weather forecast we get around here and in the sim is that it doesn't give us cloud tops. So it'll tell us an overcast layer starts at 500 feet, but we don't get what the the top of it is. Oh, that's kind of hard to forecast or, or put in weather reporting since it's hard to measure where the tops are, but it would be nice. Alright, we're doing 170. We're coming up on 5,300 feet. Arrows are set. 2992 is standard and it is cross checked. Get our landing lights on, beacons are on, windshield is on, all the heats are on, that's all good. Boost pumps can come back on. Cockpit lights are on. It's 5,000 feet. We're going to head down for three. Again, we're watching the glide slope as well. So we know when we've uh, gone underneath it. Glide slope starting to move and we're in the clouds. It's four and a half thousand feet. Kind of below the glide slope. Heading down to 3,000. A little bit of an updraft there. You see, we lost about a 200 feet per minute on our descent. It's 4,000 feet. going to be one to be uh, doing about between 85 and 90 on our approach but 80 over the threshold and we'll get her done carp heat is fine Thousand feet coming up. I think we're good once we hit three thousand, we can make that turn. And there's three thousand feet start to see ground below so we'll come up bring her level bring that power up to 30 inches and we'll begin the turn to the left make sure we stay level See where we end up from there. All right, we're going to be in good, so we're going to back off that to about there. 
So we can come in on an intercept course. So at 3,000 feet. All right, so dump check. So gas mixture is auto rich on both sides. Undercarriage, yep, we're good props. Fully forward. Speed's gonna start to decrease. We'll bring our power up to 35 inches. We've lost the glide slope as we're coming in. That's fine. Should pick it up again shortly. Speed's coming down. Glide slope's back in. Just make out some uh, ground features there. Right, time to get ourselves nicely lined up. I'm going to want a view of about there. Maintaining about 3,000 feet for the intercept. Definitely in the clouds here, although we can make out some basic features on the ground. Just holding, waiting for that localizer to start moving. Your radio altimeter is showing we're about 2,300 feet. Starting to see that localizer adjusting any second now. So we're on a slight angle coming in for the intercept. There we go, localizer starting to come in. Take over now. Autopilot is disconnected. Gonna hold that 3,000. Come around and uh, re intercept. There we go. Alright, gonna start bringing that speed back a little bit as well. First notch of flaps going in. Slightly to the, uh, the beam is slightly to the right, so we're going to adjust for that. Flying the needles here, we're watching multiple things here. We're watching the needles, we're watching the, uh, the 
way we're heading. We're going to be chasing needles here the entire way. Glide slope coming in. Wide slope, localizer. All right. We're going to be floating all over the place. Flaps, gear coming down. Props fully forward, mixture auto rich. Gear down. Flaps two, flaps three. Back on the line. There's, I can hear the marker. There's an outer marker. Speed's looking good. A little high. Sort of coming in there. We're pointing towards it. Pretty good. Don't want to get too far below the glide. And flaps full. Alright, gear down, flaps full. Lights are on, Kevin notified. We're on the glide, we're just trying to line, keep her lined up with the runway. Speed's good. And this is why it takes so long to train as an IFR pilot. Doing this for real is not easy. Especially when you're doing it manually. Right, 2,000 feet. Nicely trimmed at about 90, slightly to the right. And I can start to make out some lights ahead. Nice to see. Speed is good. I have the rabbit. Slightly to the right. Speed's good. Alright, we got our visual references here. We're gonna have that crosswind coming in, so we're gonna be crabbing down a bit. A little low, but we're not doing 
the uh, ILS approach. Oh, terrain glitch is interesting. At least she's not stuttering on me. Alright, looking good. Here we're doing a wheel landing. I'm not sure that sign should be there. Default airport. Not much you can do about that. down. Welcome to Lincoln. We're going to get off here at Kilo and we're going to head to the terminal. Let's get the engines up. So they don't stall out on us. All right. We are here. We'll leave the landing lights on people can see us. Let's get the flaps up. Alright, we'll get around the tower here. And we're going to be parking uh, here on the right by the terminal building, which is uh, right there. Right, so while we're taxiing in, we will nope, trail the or open the cow flaps. around and right, we're just gonna go in over here we're not going to be going to the uh, jetways and that looks good Brakes are on. Let's get this baby shut down. So we'll make sure the engines are running at about a thousand RPMs. Help stabilize the temperatures, stabilize the pressures. We're going to push the carb heat back into neutral. Good to shut down. I'm going to shut down the right engine first. And there's the left engine. Battery cart deployed. We'll switch over to battery cart. Avionics can come off. The beacon off. Landing lights will come off. Position lights. Windshield heat, pedo heat will come off as well. Boost pumps can both come off. Well, that can go away. Uh, generators off. Engine masters off. Cockpit lights can come off. We'll get the doors open in the back. 
And there we are. Oh, welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska. Home of the Corn Huskers. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back on Friday for our 737 flight from Boise, Idaho back to Denver, Colorado. Hope you've had a great flight and enjoy your next couple days. We'll see you on Friday. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.